Hello, and welcome to my 10-minute workouts to target PCOS belly fat. This has been um, a project I've been working on for a while because I get a lot of requests from women who have lean PCOS and struggle with belly fat, women who need to lose a little bit of weight and have PCOS and still struggle with belly fat. And um, so I've designed three 10-minute workouts. So hit subscribe on my channel so that you make sure you're alerted when every single one of these workouts is published that you can do twice a week over the course of about three weeks. And it should be a good way to kind of kick off your quest for um, reducing your belly fat through exercise. Um, each, pro each workout is going to include um, some core strengthening, a lot of full body strength training because that's what is most effective for changing the hormonal and metabolic factors that cause you to gain weight around your belly. And then we're going to finish off with a little high intensity interval training uh, because that is the ideal form of cardio for women with PCOS. It is great for optimizing your insulin response and it also is particularly helpful when it comes to managing belly fat. Um, if you like these videos, please show me some love so I know to keep making them. Also leave comments below if there's something that you're interested in seeing me post because I get most of my ideas from y'all. And if you are ready to make a commitment and really get going on managing your belly fat, you just want to go all in, head over to the PCOS Fit Studio. That is my online self-paced um, exercise program and meal prep program. And there you'll find full length 20 to 30 minute workouts, um, all designed with the similar formula with a goal of managing PCOS, changing your hormonal and metabolic profiles. And that is the key to um, managing your belly fat. And if you want to learn more about PCOS and belly fat, I also have a video for that. I'll put it right there. Click on it and that'll give you the details. All right, let's get started. I hope you have fun. Set up for a dolphin plank by getting into a plank position on your forearms and toes. Raise your hips up high to the sky and stretch the shoulders, then return back to your front plank position. Be sure not to sag in the hips on the way down. You don't want to arch your back. You want to have a strong belly when you get down to the bottom of your front plank. Great job. Just a few more dolphin planks and we will move on to the bicycle crunch. Okay, this is your last one. Let's roll over onto our backs and set up for the bicycle crunch. You wanna put your hands gently behind your head, bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. Exhale, brace in the core, lift your chin up towards the ceiling and extend your feet out in front of you. You're gonna draw one elbow in towards the opposite knee and then switch. Now, if you need less resistance, lift your legs up higher rather than lower. The lower your legs are, closer they are towards the ground, the more resistance you're gonna create in your abdominal muscles. The idea here is to twist in the trunk. It's not to use your hands to sort of crank or twist your neck. Focus on keeping that back flat on the ground as you twist from the trunk, moving your shoulders towards your opposite knee. If you get tired, remember you can always raise your legs up higher to take off that tension. Excellent job. Stand up with your left leg in front, right and back for the split squat. This is your first strength exercise. You'll concentrate on dropping down into a low lunge position and coming right back up. Your feet don't move in this exercise. It's not a lunge, it's a split squat. So you come down to the low position and back up. Keep those shoulders above the hips and focus on contracting the glute of your right leg. We're almost ready for a 15 second break before we switch legs. Nice work. Next, we'll set up with the right leg in front, left leg in back for our second set of split squats. Here goes another 30 seconds. Dropping down and coming up. Exhale on your way up and inhale on your way down. 
Keep your hips squared to the front of the room, no twisting or turning. This is an excellent exercise for your quads and it even targets the glutes a bit too. All right, nice work. Let's take a little break and set up for our next exercise, the push-up plus. Come on down to a plank position on your hands and toes like you're going to do a full-on push-up. Instead, we're going to take this in slow motion to show you how the exercise works. You slowly rise up by pulling your shoulder blades apart and sinking back down. It's a small, delicate movement, but it's awesome for strengthening your postural muscles and the muscles in the back of your shoulders. Exhale, pull those shoulder blades apart and press your body away from the mat. Inhale, come down. Keep your attention on your core as well. You should be engaging in the abdominal muscles so that when you come down, you're not sagging or arching in the back. Nice job. We're getting to the end of our set of Push Up Plus. We'll get up on our feet and set up for the curtsy lunge. Step your right foot backwards as you reach to the left corner of the room so that your toe ends up on the outside edge of the left leg and come up. Nice job. Now let's do that at regular time. Down and up. Repeating on one side before we move to the next. The idea with the curtsy lunge is to get a little bit of a different angle on the lunge so that you're working slightly different muscle groups. There'll be more of an emphasis on the outer hip and inner thigh muscles. Pay attention to your posture as you go down. Do not lean your chest forward. Keep it above your hips. Nice work. We're going to switch sides, take a few breaths, and get set up for the curtsy lunge one more time. 30 seconds, here we go. Stepping back and bending down while keeping that chest proud. You're doing awesome. This is really going to help shape your legs. All right, we're about to finish up our curtsy lunges and take a little break so we can transition into down dog push-ups. Get down on the ground, hands underneath your shoulders and bring your hips up high as you extend your legs so you make an upside down V shape with your body. Inhale as you bend your elbows and drop your head toward the ground. Exhale, press up and away from the ground. Nice job, we're gonna pick up the pace a little here. Inhale. Exhale, press away from the ground. As you bend your arms, your elbows should go back to the back wall behind you, not flaring out to the side. If you notice a lot of strain in your neck, try to reset by depressing your shoulder blades by drawing them back down toward your hips, then inhaling, dropping your head down and pressing back. Nice work, that's a challenging push-up variation. Let's get on our feet and set up for alternating front lunges. Step forward on your left foot and lower down into a lunge, then spring back up to standing. Step forward on your right foot, lower down into a lunge and spring back up to standing. Pick up the pace, alternating quickly while paying attention to your form. The idea here is to dip low, but not so low that your back knee hits the ground. Keep an eye on your posture, proud chest, shoulders back. Now if your front foot, if you find that the heel is coming up off the ground, step a little bit further forward and that should correct the issue. Nice work. Let's get set up for our next exercise, the plank up. Let's take this first plank up in slow motion. Get on a forearm plank position and then raise yourself up one arm at a time into a plank position on your hands. And then lower yourself back down into the forearm plank position. Press up on one hand and then the other and lower down on the same hand. So you're alternating between which arm you lead with as you plank up. 
up with the right, down onto the right first, up with the left first, down on the left first. Next up is our high intensity interval training finisher. We've got three minutes to finish strong. Let's get on our feet. The first exercise in our hit interval will be jumping rope. You can use a jump rope or just pretend like I'm doing. The idea here is just to get moving. Raise your heart rate by jumping vigorously. I like to spin around, make it interesting and change my jump so that the time passes faster. Just keep going, that's the most important thing. Nice work. Let's get down in a front plank for our Spider-Man exercise. We'll take the first move in slow motion so that you understand it. Up in a plank position on your hands, step your left foot towards your left hand into a low runner's lunge, then step it back into a plank. Repeat the movement on the right side before doing it again on the left. Keep alternating sides. If you'd like, you can even add in a sort of hop so you're really jumping between runner's lunges on your right leg and left leg. Let's get back up on our feet and prepare for the third exercise in our three exercise circuit, the squat jump. This is real simple guys, just squat down and hop up instead of just simply standing up from your squat. Now, if this is uncomfortable for you, you can eliminate the jump and just do a little sort of raise up onto your tippy toes and then back down. Let's finish out this 20 seconds and then we're gonna start again and do all three exercises once more. Set up to jump rope again. 20 seconds, push yourself as hard as you can. All right, let's get back down on the ground for our last set of Spider-Men. You've got this up into a plank position Step forward into that low lunge and back again. Keep it up. Add the hop in if you feel ready. Nice work. Let's get back up on our feet. Last exercise of the workout, squat jump. This is your last exercise of the workout. Give it your all. You have nothing to hold back. Squat, then jump as high as you can. If jumping's not comfortable for you, that's okay. Just squat back down. One last jump and you're finished.